This is a simple little gear motor um, with a motor in this section and a gear train in this section. Here's an incandescent light bulb. Most people don't realize that DC motors can also be DC generators. And this one's geared quite a bit. It's geared for torque when it's acting like a motor, but it reaches really high speeds when you use it as a generator. And here's a LED. And I'm going to hook the black to the cathode and red to the anode. So it's a blue LED. When we're going clockwise, we're generating a polarity that gives us a forward biased diode. Now I'm going to take another LED and this is a red LED and I'm going to hook the anode of one LED to the cathode of the other LED. There's our blue light again. There's our red light when we go in reverse. So we're generating a voltage in or current in one direction when we go clockwise. Blue is clockwise. Red is counterclockwise. Since it's a generator, let's hook it to another motor and see what happens. Notice that they coast to a stop normally, but if I grab this one and stop it quickly, the other one stops very quickly. This is a type of dynamic braking. This is, actually, this is dynamic braking. Let's show another version of this. Dynamic braking is a very important idea and it's really just a form of the conservation of energy. So I'm going to take this motor, I'm going to hook it to a little knife switch here. I'm going to open the knife switch and you notice it coasts quite a bit ordinarily. Now it's very difficult to turn because I'm dynamically breaking it. I'm going to open the switch up. Oh, didn't hit it all the way. I'm going to put the switch on the other side. Notice it stops almost instantly. I'm drawing a lot of current from it. And when I do that, it responds by creating a magnetic field that is counter to the magnetic field being generated inside the, the motor. Another example of dynamic braking that you've seen many times on YouTube, but you probably didn't realize it was dynamic braking, 
was when you take a very good conductor like these aluminum blocks and drop a magnet between them and you notice that the magnet falls very slowly and this is because when the magnet falls it induces large currents inside these aluminum blocks and these currents are opposing are, they're creating a magnetic field that's opposing the magnetic field in the magnet and this is the same thing that's going on inside the dynamic braking in a motor like this so if I touch the terminals together I can stop the motor quickly just like the magnet is slowed down by these two aluminum blocks and if these two aluminum blocks were perfect conductors if they were superconductors the magnet wouldn't fall at all it would just hover because the currents would continue to move through the block since there's no resistance and, and the net effect would be that the magnet would be levitated and stay in one place. You've seen this probably on videos on YouTube under quantum locking.